Come on into the library. It's a place where I love to be. Look in a book, here's a story for you. Who makes stories when the day is through? Who makes stories when the day is through? Story makers, story makers. Working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers. Stories are fabulous, stories are fun. Milton Wordsworth. Working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers, stories are fabulous, stories are fun. Come and be a story maker. Story makers. Midnight. Hello. Has everybody gone? The sun is down. The stars are bright. Story makers come out at night. Milton Wordsworth, story maker and magical maestro, at your service. Ah, there you are. Are you ready to make some stories? Oh, yes. Oh, Jackson, what's that? Oh, oh, <laughs> some of the children were making leaf prints today. <laughs> Milton, I was wondering, where do leaves come from? Ah, yes, leaves. They come from trees. But how do the children get the leaves off the trees? The wind blows them down. In fact, in autumn, most trees lose their leaves altogether. Oh, what's autumn? Ah, autumn. Season of mists and mellow fruitfulness. What? It's a time of year when it gets a bit colder and darker and all the leaves fall from the trees. Oh, wow! Can we have a story about it? We could use the leaf print to make the story. Cool idea, Jackson. Oh, wow! Ooh. Have a look at these. <laughs> They're brilliant. Can we put this print in the machine to make a story? Yes, oh, can we, can Very we? well. <laughs> we need you to use your imagination to help us make a story. Are you ready? Here we go. Imagine, imagine, imagine a story. It's a playbook. It's called Star in the Garden. Into the garden I come with my bright summer clothes on. There's so much work to be done. First the herbs, green and leafy they stand. I love to smell them, and they leave their scent on my hand. Now where's my spade? Make way, make way. I'm going to dig for wood lice. Look, there's one. It's all right. They don't bite. It wriggles and gives me the tickles. The snails leave silvery trails. If I look carefully, I can spot them all around the garden. Nan says she doesn't like the snails because they gobble up her flowers. Here's another job for me. The garden is covered with leaves. I'll sweep them up and put them on the compost heap. I bet that's full of mini beasts. Nan says if I break off the dried up flower heads, New ones will grow, so I have a go. Come and sprinkle some seeds. They'll grow into tall, pretty flowers. Pack the seeds with lots of care. Do I have to wait for hours? The plants are really thirsty. They're dried up by the sun. So I fill my watering can and water everyone. The insects have been busy in the garden. I've been busy too. But now it's time to stop because it must be nap time soon. I swing slowly as I sleep. Can you guess where I may be? I snuggle up close and dream of flowers. I bet Nan can't find me. What a pretty name. Mm. Star. Yeah. Do you think that she was named after the stars in the sky? Oh, yes, I suppose so. Hmm. How many?
many stars are there in the sky? Oh, millions and squillions. Mm -hmm. If I was a star, I'd be that bright one up there. I would be brighter than you. No, you wouldn't. I would. No, you wouldn't. I would. Oh, so you now what are I you would. two arguing about? Well, uh, Jelly was wondering why some stars are more sparkly than others. Why are they, Milton? Hmm. Well, I don't know. Maybe we could find out, though. Oh, how? Well, with a bit of imagination, we could make another story. I'll just put some magic stardust into the machine. Oh. <laughs> now, the main ingredient. Oh, imagination? Yes, imagination. <laughs> Are you ready? Imagine, imagine, imagine a story. <laughs> Ah, it's called Moon Kites. Sniff and Wag are friends. When the day ends and the sky grows dark, they sneak into the park through a hole in the fence. Tonight, it's windy, a perfect night for Sniff and Wag to fly their Moon Kites. They race to a hilly place in the park. Two dogs with their moon kites beneath the stars. Oh, moon kites are magical. They glow in the dark. I can't wait to start. Wag barks. Sniff says, when a strong wind blows, just watch the kites go. Geronimo! Up, up, up they fly. Glimmery, shimmery, fluttery moon kites. Soaring and swooping and looping the loop. Hooray, the two dogs whoop. But suddenly, Wag lets out a yelp. <gasps> Sniff, I think I need your help. Look how far my kite has blown. It's tangled on a star and I can't get it down. <gasps> Careful, she yowls as Sniff gives it a tug. If you're too rough, the string might break off. <gasps> Let's see, said Sniff with a thoughtful frown. We'll have to climb up and bring it down. They tie the end of the kite to a tree to make a tightrope. And then, up the line they go. Hello, says the star. Pleased to meet you. I'm so happy I've caught a moon. That's not a real moon, Wag groans. It's my moon kite, and I want to take it home. But I've lost my twinkle. I've lost my glitter. I need your moon kite to help me shimmer, cries the star. You don't need a moon kite, says Sniff. Look at this dust. What you need is a spring clean. Leave it to us. They bring two dusters and polish and clean the star until it glistens and glows. <gasps> oh, I'm spotless and glistening, said the star. Thank you so. Now slide down the rope and I'll let your kite go. <gasps> I love my moon kite, Sniff, says Wag. Thank you for helping me bring it back. Good night. Sleep tight, my little friends. Tomorrow we will play again. Yeah. So that's how they keep the stars so bright and shiny. Well, I never. <laughs> Milton, sometimes when I look at the stars, I think I can see pictures and shapes. You're absolutely right, oh pink and thoughtful one. <laughs> Some clusters of stars have names according to what they look like when they are joined up. Look, this is Orion the Hunter. There's his Ooh. body, there's his, his bow and arrow, his <laughs> legs. Yeah, but he hasn't got a head. He can't have everything. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, can we make a story from it? Why, we certainly can. <laughs> do you remember what we have to do? <laughs> imagine, imagine, imagine a story!
It's a blue cow story. Woohoo! It's called Blue Cow and the Milky Way. In a field not far away is a herd of cows grazing quietly. One of the cows is most unusual. Blue Cow wonders, wonders about the big world beyond her field. One day, Blue Cow was dreaming about the stars that come out at night. I wonder what it's like up there among the stars. She's off again, said the other cows. So Blue Cow caught the bus that stops beside her field. I'd like a return ticket to the stars, please. There you go, madam. Hold very tight. And they set off for the Milky Way. And then they arrived. When Blue Cow got off the bus, she could hardly believe her eyes. For parking beside her on a small star was a most unusual space rocket. Who was inside it? It didn't take long to find out. A door slid open and out stepped the greenest alien she'd ever seen. Hello, fellow traveller in space, said the alien. Hello, said Blue Cow. I'm Blue Cow. Who are you? I am known as Ariel the Alien, traveller of the Milky Way. The, the Milky Way? Yes, the Milky Way. You are in the Milky Way. Blue Cow was very excited at this. Milk is a subject of great interest to cows. Uh, can you tell me, if this is the Milky Way, where is the milk, please? The milk, dear heart, comes from the great space cow. Have you never seen her? And with that, Ariel the Alien gave Blue Cow a space helmet and a special mini rocket ship that fitted on her back. Moo! Ah! said Blue Cow as she made a great loop in the sky. Take this sky marker and join each star to the next. Then you will see the great space cow. Thanks, Ariel, said Blue Cow, speeding off into space with the space marker leaving a golden trail of light behind her. She flew up to the first star and along to the next, just missing a passing meteor. Then over to a few stars that were close together, all the time leaving her golden trail of light. I still can't see any cows, she thought. Ariel's rocket came zooming past. Don't forget those stars down there, or you'll never see the great space cow. Blue Cow swooped from star to star with her space marker. And then she was back at the star where she started, and she still hadn't seen any sign of the great space cow. She felt a bit disappointed. Nice work, Blue Cow. But where is she? Yonder! Blue Cow looked back where she had just flown, and there, like a great doctor dot in the sky, glowed the great space cow. Oh, she's magnificent! Yes, the biggest cow in the universe. But as they looked, the picture faded. Moo! The sky marker doesn't last for long, dear heart. But now you know where she is, you can follow the stars and spot her in the sky any night. The stars are fading. It's getting light. The dawn is upon us. The morning is nigh. We've made our stories and we bid you goodbye. Story makers, story makers, working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers, stories are fabulous. Thanks for helping. Bye, story makers. See you again soon.